I'm Heather with Magnificent Mamas, and we are joined here today with Tobin Elliott. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. So, as you said, I'm Tobin Elliott, and yes, that's my real name, not a writer name. It's the name my mama gave me, and I write horror. I I taught creative writing for 20 years. I have I see I've been writing for probably 15 years, five zero. In the last couple of years, I put out a six book series. That's horror. It's got all sorts of stuff in it, which we'll start to talk about, I guess. And the yeah. last the last thing I will say, because this just came out and I'm very excited about it, I am now turning the books into audiobook and the very first one is open. And if there is anybody out there who is interested in hearing an audiobook for free, reach out to me. I can give you a promo code as long as you give me a review. Well, there's my little blurb. <laughs> you can reach out to we'll after the call, after we're done recording, we'll talk about that too. Sounds so. good. So do you want to talk about your series first or? That's your call. I am good with anything, however okay. you want to go. Okay, well, you go ahead and talk about your series. Tell me about it a little bit. All righty. Well, as I said, six books. So this is the first one. And this, these were done by, all the covers were done by my daughter-in-law. She is a tattoo artist. So that was book one. This is, again, try to keep the glare up. <laughs> book two, book three, book four, book five, and then finally book six, Flesh and Blood, which is the end of it. So that is it. The whole thing complete. It killed me to finish writing it, to be honest. Overall, the, the series literally spans 101 years from 1911 to 2012 and it does jump around a little bit but the thing that kind of binds them all together there is a book i shamelessly kind of modeled it on hp lovecraft's necronomicon but it is a lot more aware and uh it likes to use people and that's where you kind of find the first two books coming from the first one it finds is a like a seven-year-old girl things don't go well in the second book out for blood the kid's a bit older high school he unleashes a demon in a high school and then the book kind of takes a little bit of a backseat uh in the third one is where the werewolves are introduced and it ties back to the second one the fourth one jumps way back in time to where the werewolves and the vampires have this little rivalry going the fifth one is kind of a road novel uh, slash mystery that has some vampires, has a weird staff, and then it all wraps up in the last one that ties very much back to the first couple of books. And the last one's the one that I had so much fun with, and I had written the books and I didn't know how to finish them, and then I like literally knew I was going to bring back a character from every single book into the last book. Just to yeah. Get out. And then I found a bookmark, and it reminded me of a bookstore I used to go to. And then the whole thing kind of came together when I thought, wouldn't it be cool if one of the characters who never met her dad because he died a month before she was born, if she phones the bookstore that is now a hole in the ground, and dad answers. And not only does he answer, he knows it's his daughter and he says i didn't think you were ever going to call back and then it kind of goes from there and it does wrap up the whole thing it brings somebody at least one character back from every every novel before that it's fun sounds like it like i'm already interested how are your werewolves like are they stephen king silver bullet type werewolves are they twilight wolf type werewolves there's no yeah, twilight. i had to go there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, you got to ask, right? Yeah, my vampires yeah. don't smart all my, my, yeah. I have demons, I have werewolves, and I have vampires. Um, I kind of put my own, a little bit of a spin on each one, but the, the yeah. werewolves, they're nasty. I will say they will get upset and they will grab you by the jaw and rip your jaw out of your face because they're not happy with you. So they're they're not kinder, gentler, gentler werewolves. The vampires, because they don't age and they kind of catch them early, because I based them on, believe it or not, Polish vampires, a true legend from the area where I used to grow up, where if a child is born with a call over its face, you have to save that call, dry it out, and on the child's eighth eighth birthday seventh birthday god i can't remember now uh one of the two you grind up the call and you feed it to him otherwise he will turn into a vampire and that's for poland <laughs> so my vampires look like kids this polish vampire like this whole thing is set i lived in a small town called barry's bay the town of new hope is Barry's Bay. The high school that the demon is unleashed in in the second book is the high school I went to. Uh, and the next town over uh, is a town called Wilno, 
and they actually have this reputation as being the werewolf. Sorry, my mistake. The vampire capital. Of- I'm not kidding you. You can actually look it up on. Uh, you can Google it. <laughs> I'm totally going to do that. Will know. W I L N O. Uh, Vampire Capital of Canada. Yeah, it's it's a thing. So I did some research and I thought, hey, it's a Polish community. It's the first Polish community in Canada. Let's do the Polish uh, vampires. I've done a lot of research for my stuff. And so learning the different mythology, different lore from all over the world, it's been a really true learning experience. It is. And see, I am not a research guy. I like to just kind of throw the thing down. But every once in a while, I kind of go down this rat hole and go, oh, there's a story. I'm a researcher at heart. I feel like I can sit here and research stuff for a story and then it'll be days later and, oh, I need to go back to writing for a little bit. (laughs) Well, there's, and that's the thing. And that's why I try not to research because when I start, if I go down that rattle, I don't write for a few days. I I need to write. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. But it's cool. Completely. Who would you say your inspiration would be? start your interest in writing two prompt um from a reading standpoint the, the, the ones i read that i that kind of got me hooked on that got me thinking about it it was me reading carrie but i was a bullied kid and i'm reading about a bullied kid and it was a cool story about the bullied kid getting revenge and yep. i thought, you know what i could write something like this i could do this i was really encouraged by a couple of teachers in school, especially Mrs. Roberts in, uh, in grade eight. She was the one that looked at my stuff as more than, oh, one of my students writing a story. She really encouraged me. So the other big influence on me came quite a few years later um, when I read Jack Ketchum's uh, The Girl Next Door, which is a brutal book. Uh, it's absolutely brutal. And Jack Ketchum as well, as I love him. He's one of my favorite authors. But my God, you never feel good when you finish a book. It says you really don't. He is bleak. That's not always a bad thing, though. No, I absolutely love it. But The Girl Next Door was kind of that one step above, and it gave me permission to be a little bit more bleak and to be a little bit more visceral. And I, you know, most of the stuff that he wrote wasn't supernatural. It was just really bad human beings. So and that's so realistic, like. Honestly, yeah. Well, we do such terrible things. We're the worst monsters of all. And I've said this before, but it's worth repeating. And in, in, in these books, I said I've got werewolves and I've got vampires and they're nasty. And I've got demons that are terrible, but I've got humans that are awful as well. If you had to write a book in a different genre than any that you've written so far, what would it be? Yeah, I actually tried to write a mystery once because I, I felt I was kind of in a rut and a friend of mine suggested writing a mystery novel to And I'm like, I know nothing about history. Um, And it was terrible. I did. I wrote a whole novel. Um, Did you publish it? No. Instead, I scrapped about the last 75% and then turned it into fifth book. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Yeah, turned turned my mystery into a horror novel. Um, But yeah, if I had to write anything else, probably humor because... Because I, funny. well, I don't know if I'm funny, but I find the oddest things humorous. And I have a lot of stupid stories from growing up that are hilarious. So <laughs> I'd probably go that route. <clears throat> nice. So if you could bring one of your characters to life for a day and like hang out, who would you bring to life and what would you do? It would be Sam. Uh, she is a young kid in the third book. She is my favorite character I've ever written i know nobody like her but she is foul mouth <laughs> riot of a kid so yeah no i would hang out with sam what would we do you know what yeah god if we walked around the mall that would be entertainment enough because she would just critique and make snide comments about everybody and we'd laugh our brains out sitting in the food court you know have you ever started off with the character, say, I've got a villain in one of my stories, and then ends up, like, while you're doing the writing, that completely changes? So, like, my villain's no longer a villain. Like, they're still bad. But, like, everything they did was for this main thing coming that's going to become a really important event, and she becomes, she's actually good. But everything, does that make sense? It absolutely does. It's actually one of my books. And I'm not going to okay. say which one, because it's a total spoiler alert. <laughs> Well, no, we don't I, want that. I have absolutely done that, where there is a character, I will not say no, who, no, no, but a character who starts off, and every reader that has read this character has 
not like the character, but by the end of the story, it's like, whoa, okay. Kind of didn't see that coming, kind of get what's going on. So yes, I have absolutely done that. Funny enough, when I started it, I didn't have the ending, so I didn't know that either. When I was writing that character that I was telling you about, I uh, I was writing and I took a break and I was working on another piece for a little bit. And then all of a sudden, one day I'm going back th- thinking about everything and how it's all tying in together. And I was like, wait a sec, instead of her actually being bad, yeah, well, a nice little twist. The interesting thing about villains, the best villains, they are doing what they believe is the right course of action. And I think this is why we love villains because it's the best ones i mean you you can understand why they're doing what they're doing it's not right oh yeah but you, you, but you can get it and you can kind of get it in my frame kind of go mm, yeah if i believed in that i'd do the same thing so yeah they're they're fun they're fun to write villains are fun to write so you taught creative writing did any of your students go on to publish books or a shocking amount of them. yeah there's yeah i was i actually got in my bookshelves here i'm gonna say if i had to guess i'd say somewhere around seven or eight that's awesome and you know what and the interesting thing is still run into the odd one here and there like somebody else say like, hey i finally got a fantastic sort of thing so i'm always seeing new new ones that you know it took them a little bit longer but off they went yeah that is yeah. so great it is what advice would you give to an aspiring writer don't expect what you write the first time to be perfect. Give yourself permission to write utter, absolute crap because, and I used to give them the Hemingway quote, and I don't know if you know what the Hemingway quote is, but he said once the first draft of anything is shit. And and the thing is, I think this is from what I've seen, it's not the only reason, but it is a very large reason why a lot of aspiring authors start a lot of things, but don't finish them because they start writing and they think this isn't good enough so they don't carry on whereas my whole thing is get it all down it can be garbage but get it all down and then you can go back and tweak and massage and play with it and you have the whole thing there in front of you and now you can start to work it a little that's probably my number one piece of writing advice the number two one which is just about as important is don't sit there and wait for inspiration to strike just start just and write every bloody day do you ask people to do like an outline when they're writing or do you just recommend writing that's a hard one because quite frankly everybody writes different and for some people i don't think they should ever do an outline everybody goes oh they call me like i uh, supposedly i'm a plotter Uh, (laughs) suppose don't i think i'm a plotter that mostly pants for a novel i will have somewhere between five and 20 bullet points which isn't a lot but it's Basically, here's kind of the things I know about the story. And I'll literally have them sitting at the bottom of the manuscript. And as I get to one, okay, it's it's done. And then when I get to the next one, I get rid of that one and I go down. Um, And that's how I go through. But there is a lot of space in between those bullet points where things happen. Um, And that's where I am literally making it up on the fly. So I am answering at that point. Whereas I, I've seen other people with a like a 40-page outline for a 200-page book, okay? And, and if that's what you have to do, that's what you have to do. Five days later, he's got a 250-page novel on his hands, and I hate his guts. <laughs> <laughs> I just I can't do that. So uh, I am not one to enforce an outline. I am more one to say, at, at the very least, try and know where you're you know, like mm-hmm. if you know, even if you know beginning, middle, and end, that's great. My whole uh, analogy for that is it's really hard to pack the damn car if you don't know if you're driving to Alaska or Disney Disney World in Florida. Yeah, I get you know, that completely. Yeah, so meant like where you're going. <laughs> some people, you know, though, they just have every single chapter outlined i remember reading a, a writing book by i can't even think of who the author is now i honestly can't remember but he actually showed uh, his process was okay i have these three ideas i will mull them over for the next week the one that rises to top is what i'm going to do then i sit down and i write down chapter one through chapter 10 and then i give a breakdown for each chapter and then i sit down and write the book and again that is the most alien concept on the planet for me. i would think so being a creative writer Another example, uh, Terry Fallis, uh, he's a uh, Canadian author. 
I remember hearing his story. And he said, when I decided to write a book, I knew the average book was 100,000 words. I wanted 10 chapters. So I knew every chapter had to be about 10,000 words. So that's what I did. Really? <laughs> and it worked for him. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but I just, I can't. I can't do it that way. I, I, I write when I write. I know where I'm going. How I get there is always a bit of a mystery until I get there. Do you have any other advice for aspiring authors? Honestly, yes. The other piece I would say is, if you're looking for advice, don't go to mom, don't go to dad, don't go to somebody who loves you. So you need honest advice. And honest advice can sometimes be painful. Uh, so get past the feelings and and just kind of listen to it and look at it in, in context of the story. It's hard. It's hard getting feedback, but it's worth it. Those are awesome. Do you want to share anything else about your book or anything right now before we get ready to close? I guess the only other thing I can say is uh, I have a, a link tree link on all of my social media uh, that will take you to all of the various stores. You can get the books anywhere. Um, they are available worldwide, Barnes and Nobles, Indigo in Canada and Waterstones. I don't know who all, um, as well as the Zon. Uh, <laughs> and as I said, uh, over this year, um, I will be putting out audiobook versions of them as well. So if audiobook is your jam, I love audiobooks myself. Um, you'll probably see them coming out every couple of months for the That's exciting. It's it's very exciting. And as I said, want a free one, hit me up. All I ask is for a review and return, but I will happily give you a free one. All right. Well thank you for joining us. I'm gonna have you stay on the line after sure. this um we appreciate this. We'll also make sure we have your links provided in descriptions so that everyone can easily access and knows where to find a book. Cool. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and end this. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today, and stay tuned for our next episode.